Exodus 20, verse 3 to 4. God was speaking over his bride Israel, saying, You shall not have any other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in the heavens above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. Now, I want you to imagine with me a wedding scene where God was standing on the altar and across from him was his beautiful but shaken up bride, Israel, because she just came out of a very dysfunctional and abusive relationship. And God was telling her, I am the Lord, your God, who delivered you out of Egypt, who have freed you out of the land of slavery. And he's saying, I am your redeemer. And he is saying that I am the one who freed you. I am the one who truly loves you. And I've pursued you from the beginning. I wanted you to know that I have called you to be holy as I am holy, separated unto one another that we are going to have this precious relationship, exclusive relationship. It is a relationship between a husband and a wife, between a God and his people and his church. And of course, later on, it'll be fulfilled in the day of Pentecost when the church finally says, I do. <laughs> and can I tell you, the culmination of it will be when Jesus returns the second time what he calls his bride back unto himself, where she will be in her glorious form as he is, so will we be. <laughs> but until that time, God is awakening his bride to her identity. You know, one of the things that God really, really values is the relationship that he and his people have. And this is ultimately what rest is. When we enter into intimacy with God, we enter into a place of rest. And the one thing that God hates more than anything is disconnection. It is separation. It is death. And it is this word divorce. In the book of Malachi chapter 2, verse 13 to 16, God was addressing his people uh, as they were struggling with this ideology of divorce. And here's what God says. Here's another thing you do. You cover the Lord's altar with tears, weeping, and groaning because he pays no attention to your offerings and doesn't accept them with pleasure. You cry out, why doesn't the Lord accept my worship? I'll tell you why. Because the Lord witnessed the vows you and your wife made when you were young, but you have been unfaithful to her. Though she remained your faithful partner, the wife of your marriage vows, didn't the Lord make you one with your wife and body and spirit? You are his. And what does he want? Godly children from your union. So guard your heart, remain loyal to the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty, says the Lord of heaven's army. So guard your heart and do not be unfaithful to your wife. Do you know why God said this? Because he has experienced divorce. He experienced it in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve and humanity chooses to turn our back on God and choose to commit adultery or idolatry, which is a form of spiritual adultery. And humanity chose to side with the enemy, to sleep with the enemy. And then sin and death was the result of that. The result of that was separation. It was divorce. And God hates divorce because he saw what it did to humanity, to the children of men. And the story of God has been that of redemption, have been that of God pursuing his bride back, no matter what it takes, even if it means that he has to leave the throne of heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that he sent his groom to redeem the bride. The second Adam to redeem Eve, humanity. And can I tell you this? In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 25 until 27, God says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws because the spirit of God is like that wedding ring that you cannot take off. It's not put on the outside, it's put on the inside. And he is the guarantee and the seal that we are married to God.